You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. I just love this song. You gotta bring it up. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of AfterBuzz TV True Blood. I'm your host, Kristen Carroll, and with me, let's introduce you guys, Sarah. Hi guys, it's Sarah Stratton. Hey guys, what's up? It's Scott Moore. And we're wishing our main head host, JC, to feel better. He wasn't feeling too good today. He, uh, he's getting the Hep V vaccine. I was vaccine. gonna say, like, did he have <laughs> Hep V problems? Getting the vaccine. Crazy I'll weekend. Um, this is episode four, Death is Not the End. And we will have a special caller coming in pretty soon. Um, but until we get to that point, what did you guys think? What, what was your initial thoughts on this episode? I mean, I think overall this episode was so different than normal. Um, and in a good way. I mm-hmm. was expecting some sort of memory lane type episode sometime this season, being that it's the last season. You love throwing in that kind of like curtain call or just mm-hmm. remembering people who had big chunks of um, of the series. So I like that they did that. I like that they're doing it this week in episode four and not bringing it out like episode nine and ten because I think things are just going to get revved up and mm-hmm. be going so quickly and building so much that it's like then if you're trying to throw in mm-hmm. a bunch of um, people taking like their final bow in it, it, it pulls you out. So I was a little pulled out this episode but in a good way. I liked the placement of it. I liked that I did get to see some of these familiar faces. And I thought that they did a good job of also bringing in really good Sookie moments this episode. And also, which was a big deal to me, I was like, okay, I'm getting back on Team Sookie. And they did. They heightened the plot. They did a big rescue scene, big fight scene. So overall, I really liked this week. I thought it was a smart choice for how they created, where they placed it, in this season because it had to happen sometime and so on that i'm saying good job guys <laughs> good job true blood what about you scott what did you think um, of this episode well i'd like to see uh vampires flying a private plane that's always nice you know it's like you know that, that, that's always a good thing but uh my favorite moments were the flashbacks too and i loved having ginger i mean how great was that to have her back how and see like cute was the, she? how adorable right and from the very beginning like going back to the 90s and just how kinda, smart she was. How so smart she was. That was crazy. Just uh, probably all of her ideas were just glamored yeah, out of her throughout I, right? the year. So I, I agree with you, Sarah. I love the fact that they took us back at this point instead of later on. And mm-hmm. we really got to see the backstory, I guess, of like how it all began. How you know Pam and Eric came to have Fantasia. What was there before? Why they were there? Um, so I really loved that. I thought that was fun. And it was a fun little distraction from all the other seriousness going mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. in the present day. Um I'm still not totally back on Team Sookie yet. Um, I love her. Like she here, had he, some good moments. She did. It was there. like, hey, I'm a woman. Like I, I want to take care of everything, which is good. But I didn't. I don't know. I found it a little bit like her usual. But annoying. I, fe- I felt like her comments were very targeted towards like this is what I have learned mm-hmm. in the past, however many years. Like I have learned yada yada, and here's the advice I can give on. Versus we've seen her constantly in the beginning of the season, like redoing the same mistakes right that's like, true walking around in the forest and throwing away <laughs> her herself. phone and <laughs> just like haven't you learned mm-hmm. yet and this one was like oh wait i can teach you like my favorite was when she was like oh you can just get a guy to talk just give him a ball and so i was like that was actually that's a great line a guy just that's needs a ball to talk, to talk. Lesson. i know it's i so do true. but you know <laughs> i think it's completely it's true story. <laughs> <laughs> i agree i um yeah i have like I don't want to say a hate relationship, but I have a, a love, annoying relationship yeah, with Siggy. Okay. Right. And I feel like this episode, I loved her. Um, and I loved her. I think it brought out a little bit of the sassy first mm-hmm. and second season that, that we all there. loved. Yes, that I do um, agree with you there. And it was kind of nice to see her taking charge and, and really surprising people even. I mean, oh. when she, I mean, she basically made Jessica cry. 
And but it was it. It's that defiance she had in the first season where no one can tell mm-hmm. her what to do. There was she was gonna have it her way because mm-hmm. Sookie knew best, and she was just like she had that strut going on, and mm-hmm. it was back. And I feel like it was interesting because it was a lot more like she's she's more broken down though. Yeah, it wasn't like, the whiny Sookie exactly. that we had Exactly, it wasn't for a while. like was... I'm the pretty mm-hmm. blonde. Um, Belle of the South that comes in. She was in. even in a t-shirt and, exactly. and her hair up and everything. I mean, did I was she... like t-shirt, like n- no makeup, still mm-hmm. looking cute, but like on a mission. And I like that Sookie. And she always does when it comes down to it. She always is, is there for her human friends. Because we even saw that, you know, a couple of seasons ago too. When when Bill was mm-hmm. being all weird and was going to kill everybody. Well, that was last season. But, um, you know, she always stuck up for them and always went there and always ended up you know for Arlene even though she's a little feisty sometimes I feel like it's like skipping forward a little and I know we're probably going to talk about um it coming in like you know we talk about these things by character by chronological order but as well as what you said with Suki, I felt that there was a very harsh line kind of being drawn towards the end of this episode of like kind of choosing your own sticking mm-hmm. with your own mm-hmm. um they kind of built it up that everyone was battling their responsibilities through this yeah. episode it's like actually kind of been a multi episodic arc for different characters of like mm-hmm. what people need to be doing and how they're reacting to this and how it's like impacting like their jobs like on this one we got sam almost giving up on his mayor duties for his family and versus when we see characters like kenya who <laughs> she did she sacrificed the police work to go out on her own um, and at the end of this, we have Suki kind of just hug- hugging Arlene. Mm-hmm. We have Eric turning around and really seeming more focused on Pam and Willa. I'm so nervous yeah. if that was his final moment, maybe in Shreveport with that group. I mean, do you got I? That's what I felt at the end. Is that that look back and forth where she was like, "Thank you," and kind of letting him go. And Come. I'm like. I know. I'm wondering what they're trying to do, too. Are they trying to set us up to feel that way, and then they're not going to do that? Or he'll always always come back to her? Yeah. I I just... The only thing that would make me angry is if that was his final nod in general. Mm -hmm. Like, because I think they left so many unanswered questions with him, um, with what him and Pam are, what him and Willa are. Like, the teaser kind of made sense that he is going to come back next week. Mm -hmm. But that story needs to be... They've built it up. They built up his chase. They're building up him only being a month. Mm -hmm. Like, they Mm -hmm. need to give us more information. I I mean, I I think they'll follow him. I just... I'm kind of nervous that that's his last interaction with... Yeah, with the group. Mm -hmm. I think maybe his ending will end up being with Pam and potentially Willa if she Mm -hmm. goes out with them. Um, While we're waiting for our caller to come in... um, Let's get started, you know, really get get into it. So we start off with Suki and Jason making, and I'm glad we actually saw them making the calls. We mm-hmm. see Suki calling Alcide's mm-hmm. dad, um, and then we got a, oh, there's something flying around the studio. <laughs> um, it's, okay. Sam. it's Sam. It's <laughs> Sam. Sam, is our go special sit guest. down. Uh, yeah, he Sam is our special guest. fly. <laughs> oh, look, and now he's naked fly. on the side of the studio. <laughs> oh, sorry, the cameras don't point that way, guys. No. Um, so, yeah, so we had Suki uh, calling Alcide's dad, and then we got to see Hoyt, which yeah. we had talked about, you know, maybe he making an appearance mm-hmm. at some point. I was really surprised um, that for some reason, because obviously we had Maxine on, and I don't know if she did, – did she clarify that Hoyt was going to come on? Because I know she had said that she partially kind of – she remember they worked so much together mm-hmm. she had wanted for her character to kind of be able to reconnect with them and i was like oh like, poor maxine <laughs> like hoyt does care mm-hmm. he's just in the sun in alaska <laughs> totally separate <laughs> shooting location which is probably still like somewhere up north in, yeah. in california <laughs> who knows just but, down the street <laughs> yeah but beach. between him and Jackson, and I really liked Hoyt as a character. I liked Jackson's phone call more. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it, well, and be, I think it's also because Hoyt doesn't remember right. Jason too, so there's not too, as much so, as a connection. Right. And I think that was what it was for me too, was not mm-hmm. having that connection with him, and it was it was almost kind of sad. It was like, oh, he doesn't. And your attention's being you know? pulled mm-hmm. because for jackson and sookie you know they're mourning over the same person Mm -hmm. they have so much relationship and then when it was hoyt and jason's phone call 
part of me was attached to Hoyt and being like, oh, you have Maxine. But part of me was like, Jason's just struggling with Hoyt. I wanted yeah. to hug and, Jason more than Hoyt. And that's a very... For a lot of yeah. reasons. But <laughs> it, <laughs> but that's, that's a weird point of view to come from on the nature of their call. Like, mm-hmm. we should be crying for them either both together or for the person they're calling. Well, and, and it was... I felt the same. I felt drawn to Jason's kind of you know, lack yeah, you, of you, connection. You felt bad for him, too. Yeah. It's like here he was trying to talk to him and he doesn't remember him and it just it felt kind of sad for him and you're right, kind of took it away from what the point of the phone call was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Well, I think because out of the seasons, as much as we all love Maxine because she's hilarious, mm-hmm. she's not a nice person all the time, um, fun to play and, and Dale couldn't be any more opposite of Maxine. <laughs> um, but... I think that's another thing too is is you know Hoyt's relationship with his mom even though like we're like eh, she's other, fine we're like, we knew that one was coming she was kind of bad to him sometimes but like think about Jackson we're, we're not even supposed to really like Jackson no, we're not. anymore no. we're not no, he you're right. I mean they don't even like they're not mm-hmm. portraying him in a good light they're not portraying mm-hmm. him like he's a reformed dad like this is a flashback of basically the same guy we left mm-hmm. he still got his like sexy woman in her lingerie in the middle of the the day in a trailer like <laughs> i mean nothing's gotten life, better right? and you're mm-hmm. your heart's aching for both of them mm-hmm. in that conversation because yeah, he's having that yeah. loss and you're still you're still feeling for him yeah, yeah and you're like oh it's okay all the bad stuff you did because you're hurting mm-hmm. over your son <laughs> like but he obviously you're very like, hot son <laughs> so we, we we're feel all for just you just really hurting we feel for one. you we're well somebody else who, who's also having you know a lot of emotions they they go to see um you know Arlene's kids and then Holly's over there mm-hmm. as well I mean mm-hmm. I love that conversation Suki had with them though I like that she didn't try and um it wasn't a telepathic one uh like that it was an actual conversation mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. she was having that was a good point yeah and that because I thought that's why she was kind of going to be the one to go check on them because she could kind of figure out what they were actually mm-hmm. thinking oh, were so I like that she was just trying to talk to them and that it was all out in the open. Yeah. Because that was the whole it, that was the whole essence of their conversation was she was going to be honest with mm-hmm. them so they could be honest with her. And I like that that wasn't as just like, oh, so he's only comforting when she's reading someone's mind. Right. It wasn't like especially the one-sided. When, exactly. Kind of especially when the next scene, you see what can happen mm-hmm. when she uses her powers. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that contrast that they provided. Yeah, no, that was a very good point because I didn't even really think about that. I was just thinking, oh, you know, it was the very beginning of the episode. I'm like, here's Suki again trying to save everybody and I was already getting my annoyed like state of like, what is she trying to do? But then you're right. That's a good point. Yeah. Like she really was just trying to connect with them without you know, reading exactly. their minds and trying to really be there for them. Different tactics yeah, of Suki different. Yeah. throughout the episode <laughs> alongside memory lane. Mm-hmm. Arlene's kids are getting so old now. I, know, like, I feel like old, off. like looking at them. Cause I'm like, I remember when they were this young. Like, <laughs> no, you feel like it, one of those did. people. It threw me off though. Actually at first when I saw them, I'm like, Oh wait, those are her kids. Like they're so big now. Like I'm, when did that happen? I was like, I wonder how old, <laughs> like how big is Mikey? Oh yeah. Like, I'm, they they can't have him too old because it's only no. been like actually somebody on YouTube commented about like the timeline and I know we had talked about it a little mm-hmm. bit with the diary um, that it's only about what two and a half years since the first episode maybe three so they have like a toddler wa- wandering so, yeah. upstairs that's what I was wondering too it's like, I really that's want probably why they're not to showing just run him. across the room <laughs> just in the middle of like one of the fights he's just like yeah. Mikey with like well, his like a doll right that's what I was wondering too because that's a good point and, and and kind of speaking of that timeline I was kind of trying to figure it out too because when they're talking about Jessica and, and mm-hmm. said it had been like 10 weeks or whatever with the bullet wound and, and so I was trying to figure or out how the not were, feeding or the not feeding and mm-hmm. I was like how are, yeah, how are we figuring out the timeline here so of how much time a lot gone of in research the episodes. would it's have t- to do it's, that it's very difficult though because i was thinking okay so has it been two months since that i take episode? so many notes about what they say and like what they're like i don't know wearing and doing that i cannot keep track of like years months days mm-hmm. hours i know i'm always writing down quotes and stuff I I get, too, and sometimes i get confused like i totally got um lost when they were having the jessica um james bill intervention mm-hmm. about eating because i was like wait i thought we were in the middle of the day and then i think we were in the middle of the day yeah but remember he had his house renovated so i think it is completely blacked blacked out out. Mm -hmm. kind of like that hotel in dallas that they went to in season two gotcha because i was like i was like 
I'm a little confused. I know, I had that moment too. That's was between that and the 10 week thing. I was like, wait, how did 10 weeks already go by since like, her bullet wound? I'm like, what? I think that's why his ear was bleeding as well. I mean, yeah. I think it was, it was Justin she much. fed, not the just or the that she just fed. Yeah, yeah. Keeps it yeah. So we see Sookie go up to Holly and, and triggers her memory. And that was such great, a great scene by Lauren, mm-hmm. uh, Bowles, who plays her, um, to kind of see what she had gone through. And they find out it is Fantasia. Finally, somebody like, they're able to get that. And then they're off. And Sam is in, I'm going to get my, my wife and my baby and Jason. I love that Jason sometimes is the voice mm-hmm. of reason. I, I think, I still think of him, you know, mm-hmm. younger, but he knows. He tries. What he's doing sometimes. Yeah. He tries. Yeah. Sometimes it's a yeah. swing and a miss. And sometimes right, he tries. it's like, oh, I was aiming for that. But look what I got. Um, I agree with you. I want to go back a little bit to Holly. Yeah, please. Because what I found fascinating was we see in sad is that we find her in so much pain because mm-hmm. she's obviously been glamored. She doesn't remember anything and, that has happened to her. And she probably hurts because nobody's, you know, mm-hmm. taking care of all those bites. Exactly. But where we left Holly, like the last time we saw her before the whole force thing, she was the one basically volunteering mm-hmm. to go. Like mm-hmm. she was a strong, like, woman who was ready to take on this challenge to help save everyone. And I felt like she was very, like, proud yeah. in a way. Of what yeah. she, not proud, but, not like, proud, but like, willing like she knew what she was signing up for. She knew what she was putting herself in that situation. She was going into it very brave. Yeah, like the confidence and being yeah. able to go for it. And, and now and she's lost strong. all that time. And it's like, I want to be like, no, you were so brave. You have been so strong through this whole thing. You weren't sitting there just being tortured for weeks and weeks and like depressed in it. Like you were fighting. Mm-hmm. And so you like want her to keep fighting. And now she's just like, crying and oh, i was like no. oh. i was just like ah i was like i just want you to like i wish like suki kind of had filled her memory completely yeah. in and it wouldn't just be the horrible torture but she would like know that she did so much good mm-hmm. and she like tried to save people because i was like ah that that all got stolen from her I too know. it's sad because it just seemed like she was so beaten down you bring mm-hmm. a good point and also it just it was such an intense scene too with her watching her get those memories out mm-hmm. and everything i'm like oh my god like so that was a tough i think scene for her to have to do like, oh, it was yeah. just so different from what she's had to do in the past i was like yeah. oh you could almost feel that intensity exactly it's like I, I, I felt i was just like no i want you to be like strong and proud no. of yourself i you think did she, a good job she needed a moment she needed an andy hug who didn't <laughs> even know what, a hu- what am i supposed to do I know, with like, you now that? it's your girlfriend for goodness Go sake yeah her. and then i like when because i'm like hug her we and were all like that like, right? we were yeah. like <laughs> we were all like yelling like hug oh. her and then Suki was just like, you know, us girls, we like to be held. Just, you know, mm. do that. So we're going to take a quick break from the recap because we have the lovely Tanya Wright, a.k.a. Deputy Kenya on the line. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> good. It's good to hear from you. Thanks for staying up late. I know you're calling from, uh, we got an East Coast on, on the phone. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. We yes. are so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We just finished watching episode four. Um, so we're getting into the mm-hmm. recap. Yeah. We just saw the big, huge fight scene that you were a part of. A little bit crazy out there. And w- yes. We didn't <laughs> see you. crazy, and Kenya has taken some wild and crazy turns. She really yeah, has. She has. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we lost track of her tonight. Like, you're still alive, right? <laughs> Ah, you have to wait. Ooh, <laughs> oh, I will be revealed. I was like, is Krista going to be the death angel again? I know. Somebody tweeted, like, is she dead? And I'm like, um, well, she's calling from the phone, so maybe she's safe. <laughs> My vote is that you are not dead. No. Because Kenya has to have, like, if she is going to die, she has to have, like, a crazy death. We have to see it. Like, it needs Come to on. be front and center. I'm hoping she doesn't. But if she does, it had to. Be, it would have to be crazy. Yes, well... All I can say is keep watching. <laughs> uh, like I said, a Jeez. lot of crazy twists and turns this year. And, um, mm-hmm. So, you know, next episode will be, uh, won't depart from that. How was it filming the the raid on Fantasia? Because it's got to be a kind of cool scene for you guys because most of the cast is there. And, you know, it's not a side story as well. How was that? Yeah, I, uh, um, it was fine. It was great. It was fun. It was a complicated scene to shoot. And so uh, I think this is episode four. So the uh, director was uh, Greg Feinberg, who's also the executive producer of the show. Um, so we shot it from uh, every angle imaginable. And there are you know, a lot of people 
uh, in that particular scene to cover. And it was also very cold. We shot this mm-hmm. in uh, California, Malibu, at like 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Oh, that's good. And it, chilly. it actually was like freezing cold. <laughs> <laughs> but, Crazy. Um, but it was fun. It, you know, so it's a lot going on. So, so fun I fun. have a question for you. How do you feel about this kind of a new rebellious Kenya? We've always known her to be sassy, but this is more of a darker side. It is dark and, you know, it, it, it is, it's dark and it's also, um, I guess, that you know, sort of, we all have a dark side, but Kenya has sort of tapped into her worst fear and sort of made it true for herself. Mm-hmm. Um, which was a surprising way to, to uh, end this character, I think, because she's always been the same. Yeah, she's always the, been uh, like the rock. Yeah. I think it. she's one of the characters who kind of shows the extreme of how the town could think because she was always so stable through the craziness. Right. But, um, you know, I guess uh, these folks sort of got in her head a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm surprised that any that she would allow anybody to get in her head, quite <laughs> frankly. But uh, I guess they did, and, and, and uh, she's running around with a ragtag bunch. <laughs> she needs to claim some of... a bunch of, of winners, I, let's uh, tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> she does have... It seems like she's getting a little more um, respect from at least her co-vigilantes. Right, right. Well, Which yeah, are, she is sort of seniority in, in the gun holding division for sure exactly um, she brought the ammo right um <laughs> the so, yeah little kenya <laughs> how do you like the evolution of her throughout all the seasons was there something in particular that stood out that you were like that was a great moment for my character um for this particular season well, I'll let you see next episode. Maybe oh, next, next episode will we'll, 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 uh, uh, we'll answer that question. Ooh, um, keep a lookout. Yes. <laughs> Which could Jeez. mean she's alive yeah, or it's exactly. a flashback. <laughs> right. It could mean it's many, so, many things. It's so hard to um, tell. It is. <laughs> yeah. Next week, next week. How are you guys enjoying it? Oh, I'm loving this. I mean, we're all huge fans of all the shows. I'm loving this season because they are giving such a nod back to mm-hmm. everything um, and, and giving us more information on everybody. And we get to see everybody. We get to see more of you. And, you know, we saw more of Maxine and, and all the other characters as well that really have brought this show together for all seven years. I think yeah, I think that there was a return um, to, to, to the sort of natural formation of the show, the way that the mm-hmm. show um, started season one, and I think there was there was a real effort to uh, to get back to the show's roots. I wanted to actually know a little bit about your initial feelings towards True Blood when you jumped on board. <laughs> like when you found out you were going to be on this show for the first time, and you're reading the scripts. Like, what were you thinking? Like, did you see the potential in it? Did you love it? How would your How was your feeling about True Blood? Um, well, yeah, I, I actually remember my audition really well. I, uh, I went into a room, and, well, I had an audition, and I knew it was a new show called True Blood, and it was based on um, uh, Charlene Haas, who's mm-hmm. been very mm-hmm. successful, very popular vampire novels, and then I also knew that it was HBO, and I also knew that it was Alan Ball, and, you know, he's had a pretty good track record, mm-hmm. and very talented man. Um, so I knew that I, the show was in good hands, and I had uh, an inkling that there was a good shot that it would be uh, fairly successful. Um, you know, sort of like Orange, well, a little bit different from Orange is the New Black, which is the other show that I'm on. And, um, you know, it's Netflix, and you're not, oh, I was like, oh, gosh, I hope people watch this. And like, and then it <laughs> takes like, off right. like crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I'm very fortunate to, to, to be on both of these shows mm-hmm. that, are, that are doing so well. Um, but, uh, yeah, so True Blood, it, you know, just came as, a, as an audition. I remember being in the audition room and um, reading the character and auditioning, and I remember the, the Alan Ball and, and Nancy, Nancy Oliver, who wrote the very first episode that I appeared in season one. Um, I remember them laughing in spots that I had not expected. And I was thinking, you know, as I was walking to my car, you know, after saying you get in your head, and like, boy, were they laughing at me or were they laughing with me? 
And then literally at that moment, I got a call from my agent saying that I got the part. It happened wow. very, very quickly. I was going to say, wow. you won them over. Yeah, seriously, you were yeah. just getting your car. Well, I, you, you know, I don't know if it was me so much, but te a television is, is a fairly quick car. You get your answer very quickly because um, it's got to be cast and it's got to be shot. And then, like, there's the next episode right right away. So, um, you know, there are a number of things that have to happen. You have to whole production get you know paperwork contract and what uh, costume fitting mm -hmm. and so you know it has to be done fairly quickly because a lot of other things need to be done like immediately after so, <laughs> everything um, is yeah, boom 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 right. <laughs> that's crazy um what are your favorite scenes from through do you have any favorite moments or scenes throughout your filming on this show um i would yeah, probably two scenes. One scene uh, probably is actually my first scene that I shot season one when um, when I arrested Tara because she was talking about herself <laughs> big in the middle of the road, and um, that was a fun scene. I've always wanted to have a scene with Nelson Ellis. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I just thought it would be really funny and kind of cool to, for, for uh, Kenya and, and Lafayette. Too. I'm sure they've mm -hmm. had a That's few run-ins. We haven't. I don't yeah. think we've seen them on camera, but I can imagine <laughs> them. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really, um, there was a scene. Um, I guess it was season three or season four, where uh, Bud quit, and he talks about. <laughs> the polyps in his ass <laughs> i just remember that monologue very well and i remember chris bauer plays andy and i really having a time keeping a straight face I that just that monologue. and uh do you have any tricks to that how do you stop from laughing when someone's starting talking about the polyps in their ass i mean sometimes you just have to laugh and you just have to do it again but, do a uh, couple of takes you know you find some sort of distraction you just kind of look away and look at the ground and and breathe and um lick your lips instead of <laughs> smiling you know i mean you know you do what what you have to do um because you got to get the shot but um yeah it was just funny i remember that that's hilarious. <laughs> Tiny distractions to help one from yeah. laughing. I'll put yeah. those in my memory brain. Okay, I've got to lick my lips, stare. Okay, stare at the ground. <laughs> We're set. I'm ready. Yeah. And then I'm wondering, did you, um, with it being the final season, did you take anything from the set? You're like, oh, I'm going to take my deputy star badge or something. You know what? I didn't take anything from the set. Oh. Miss She's a good law enforcement person. She's <laughs> yeah. not taking anything. You saw the rules. I know, right? I mean, I should have taken the badge. I should have taken that uniform. <laughs> I, I was happy to get out of that uniform. I think there was one episode, uh, one season, maybe season three, where I, where it was just one episode where I was out of the uniform. But uh, pretty much the whole time, I've been in that, that one uniform. How many? Uh, the pants have changed sizes over the years, but... Um, <laughs> You know, that, that, that I want to know because you have you have so many like scenes where you know you guys are fighting or running around or you know things get messy. How many like sets of that uniform would they have on set? Would they have multiple ones? Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that would be. Uh, I don't know if you guys are gonna have Audrey uh, Audrey Fisher mm -hmm. the costume of it. She would know uh, how many there were. I have no idea, but yeah, they have to have duplicates. Yeah, I was gonna at say. least duplicates, probably triplicates. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're probably and seeing more. that uniform everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. But I actually also had um, some questions, Tanya, about just your past because I know that you have been all over mm -hmm. TV and film and theater, and I'm just kind of wondering, like, what your like favorite projects have been besides, like, obviously the amazing shows of True Blood and Orange Is the New Black. Do you have any favorites on your long, long resume? Um, I I would say that 24 was a favorite. Mm -hmm. I was in uh, season one of 24. It was a very, you know, again, it's, it was, you know, it came. You're a hit maker. Another really mm -hmm. big show. But in the beginning, it was, you know, it was weird. It was the show with the number. And then you had to watch every episode. It was 24 hours. And, and I remember, like, in the beginning of the season, it was very, uh, you know, people weren't really watching. So it was like really touch and go whether or not the show was going to get picked up for the back nine episodes, season one. 
Um, I was I was only in season one of 24, and then it became like this huge phenomenon. So um, I would say that I would say 24 was a favorite experience because you know there's that tension in 24 that mm-hmm. that requires you as an actor to be very present. So you can't infer anything uh, about who you think you are because you really don't know, um, and things will, might change and. You just I, I had no idea what what the writers and the producers had in store for this character. The character that I played was uh, you know, Senator Palmer's right hand gal and she you know, she's actually it was actually a part written for a man and they at the at the last second changed it uh, into a woman. And um Wow. You know, I I didn't know, you know, we shot the pilot. You know, again, it was like this strange show with the boxes, and, the <laughs> and you know, it was like, what is this? Hopefully, someone again. Hopefully, someone will watch it. <laughs> okay, so here's. Um, I but, would. Um, you know, it's just. Um, I, I would say that was a favorite experience too. Another favorite experience was a mini series I did many years ago called Mama Flores Family, mm-hmm. uh, with Cicely Tyson and mm-hmm. Queen Latifah and Blair Underwood, mm-hmm. where I was in uh, Georgia for many months. And I played um, a great lady, <laughs> and uh, that was that was a nice time. It was oh. nice to be. I liked being down south. I'm I'm New York originally, where you know everything is fast and it's a slower slower pace down south. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Is New York faster or slower than Shreveport? That is the <laughs> question. Yeah. It's <laughs> How'd you do that? For- we didn't shoot most of True Blood is shot in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did that work for you then? Do you rent then in LA if you live in New York when you come out well, here? Well, I used to live in Los Angeles for many years, and then uh, shortly right before Orange is the New Black, I moved back to New York, which mm-hmm. is my home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so these, this last year, I've sort of been back and forth between the shows and. Um, now that True Blood is over, um, I'm firmly back in Los Angeles now shooting season three of Orange is the New Black. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> How is it going from being the lot <laughs> to Orange is the New Black? I mean, you're getting the whole other side of it as well. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, that you know, on True Blood, you know, you're taking care of the law and then you go on a show that's completely against it. You're with all these convicts. And how has it been right. on the complete different side of it? Yeah, well, I you know it's nice to be out of the uniform in Orange <laughs> in the Black. They are vastly different characters in mm-hmm. pretty yep. much every way, and um, you know I'm just really delighted and grateful that I've been invited to play these really uh, interesting, funny, and complicated women uh, on television for so long. Um, I'm very grateful. That's awesome. Do you think it's that's what makes these shows such hits? Is that I feel it, like a lot of the shows you've been part of, they do have these very dynamic characters that are very well developed. Do you think that's the key to making a hit show? Oh, I think it's a perfect storm of so many things that I don't take lightly at mm-hmm. all. I mean, it's it is it it, it it I think it's a matrix of things like cast like. Obviously, the creator, you know, who's sort of, who sort of rounds everyone up from the crew to the cast to to everything, and it's like you just, I just feel like, you know, even with Orange is the New Black, it's so specific, but it's like I just feel like everyone was chosen, like, to come and play in this sandbox for X amount of time, and like all of these specific and particular energies are crucial. To, to the whole, and mm-hmm. and they're no small parts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so it's that. like uh, you know, it's it's just like a perfect matrix and a perfect storm. And for whatever reason, you know, again, fortunately, I have been in the perfect storm of these very successful television shows. I don't know how. I don't necessarily choose them you know someone said the other day you pick great projects i'm like you know these these are the projects that came my way and um you know i I take no credit for it you know i try to do the best i can do with each part that i'm given but uh they were not chosen they 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 
they landed here. <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> well, you were very, oh, very yes. smart to say yeah, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and that yeah. credit does go to you. And the talent goes to you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the hard work and everything. So con- congrats on that. Yeah. If you did have a dream project or a character you could choose to do, do you have any like dream roles or people you would want to personify? Or a show maybe that you'd want to be on that's, that's on? Yeah, I, I, I don't think like in terms of that, I think in terms of people I'd like to work with. And then, mm. you know, usually great groups of people create great things. Mm-hmm. Like Gingy Cohen has created a great thing, you know. Um, and Alan Ball has created a great thing. And Joel Sternow and Howard Gordon and 24 have, have created a great thing. So I think in, in great things in terms of people and interesting people, creative people, dynamic people. Um, usually, something good will come out of uh, out of that. But I, yeah, I don't. I don't think in terms of of roles. I think in terms of groupings of people. I'd love to work with like Martin Scorsese. I think he's really interesting. I think David Fincher is really interesting. You know, as much as I'm on uh, Orange Is the New Black, I do look at House of Cards, and I like mm-hmm. mm, I like that show. Um, <laughs> It's in the Netflix and, fa- uh, family, mm-hmm. you should, you know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Pretty uh, but I, I do love my role on Orange is the New Black. I, I must say, you know, of all the characters that I've played over the course of my career, I would say that that one is the most, uh, uh, um, that one asked the most of me, and I am, I am happy to, uh, uh, to provide. That's great. We'll have to have you come back and when season three comes out, then come back and call in or come talk visit. about yeah. some orange yeah. is the new black here at well. Afterbuzz as well. Yeah. yeah, and Scott is yeah. one of the hosts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm curious, how was it for you to be able to walk away, you know, from this character after being there for seven seasons? How did it feel when you had to hang up the the uniform for the last time? Because at some point, you know, it almost becomes a part of you after so much time. So how did it feel on that last day of shooting when you walked away? Yeah. Um... I don't know. I felt I felt complete. Um, I felt like I was finished, and um, I felt grateful. And I, you know, I was still like very much, like I said, com- sort of going back and forth between the two shows. Um, so yeah, I remember. Like I said, that last day was very cold. <laughs> so I was happy to just get out of the cold. Um, but it, you know, it wasn't. Um, I, you know, when you, when you're filming a show and you know that this is the end, it's mm-hmm. not. You know, at least for me, it was not. Uh, it was not necessarily an emotional thing, uh, because I had already in my mind known that I was that this is, this is the end of the season. Like mm-hmm. there is no more, um, and we knew that going in, um, and so. Yeah, I was I was ready. Like I said, I you know, it's, uh, I've been sort of bouncing back and forth a lot, and um, I'm sort of happy to be back in New York and with in my home, and right. uh, I'll miss everybody on True Blood. I'll, I'll you know I see you know we tweet sometimes, and uh, I'll miss them, but uh, you know, and that's life. Right. You know, you you have this family for X number of times, and that's I think one of my favorite parts about working as an actor is that you, you, you have this, this group that uh, that's your family and you band together and then then you band apart. That's the one thing that you can mm-hmm. count on in show business, mm-hmm. I think, that, that there will be an end. <laughs> exactly. That's a good way to look at it. There will always exactly. be an end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tanya, for calling in. It was so great to talk to you again. Um, really appreciate it. We can't wait to see next episode and kind of get more answers on your character. <laughs> yes, you'll see. And thank oh, you again so much, waiting. too, for calling in. Yes, I know it's late, late over there. So, yes. You know, I ap- uh, thank you. We thank appreciate you, guys, it. for having me. Oh, thank my you, God, anytime. You. So thank you so much, Tanya. Okay, take care. You too. Take good care. night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. She is she's so, so nice. nice. Yeah. So sweet. I was like, she's just such a sweet lady. I was like, oh, I feel like you could just like sit down right. and relax like, and have coffee, and, like, talk, and just keep exactly. going. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's so re- relaxing it to talk with her. It was so funny when I saw her on the red carpet because I have a sm- uh, short interview with her on there. Um, I didn't recognize her at first because she's all doll- dolled up, and we're so used to seeing her in in her like, and that uniform. In that uniform, mm-hmm. and I was just like. 
wait a minute, deputy, I got this. <laughs> You know. You're like, look how pretty. You don't have to wear khakis like every day. She had a gorgeous green dress on. I was You're like, like Color. man, this is awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm, she is beautiful. I, I wish I would know like, what happened to her character, though. I oh, I think so, we're going to find so, out. Yeah, such, so quiet such a tease. Here. I guess we're going to yeah. find out next week. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of um, more characters, so let's let's get back to um, get back to the True Blood. Um, oh yeah. So we talked mm-hmm. about Holly and Jason uh, with Sam in the car. So our next thing is Sookie. Her next place of interest is Bill's house. Mm-hmm. Oh, she always of ends up right because because Bill apparently mm-hmm. can save every everything. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, building up Bill real mm-hmm. quick. That's what I'm feeling. <laughs> mm-hmm. So before like, she, goodbye, I'll see you. Like see you later. Yeah, <laughs> already, see he's already in the past. Aside. It's like eh. maybe goodbye, Eric. Like <laughs> clear the way. We just need to fully like banish Sam and then. We're good, although he seems quite in he love seems, with Nicole. He does. Yeah, and she didn't die yet, so. Mm-hmm. But, but as we know with Sam, though, he likes grief sex, too. So if, <laughs> you know, if, if Sookie yeah. ended up at the same time, maybe. That that could happen. So yeah. Jessica's, mm-hmm. you know, she's still not healing as well in, in Bill's house. And we find out finally the reason she's not healing is because she's not eating. So I mean, Jessica's been very vulnerable, I think, throughout all of the seasons pretty okay. much out of all of the vampires we've seen she always seems the most human she always has a lot going on mm-hmm. like in her mind um like they all obviously have these battles and like physical altercations but jessica always has like some sort of like internal dilemma mm-hmm. happening almost every season and this one, I mean, she does a great job with it. I believe her. She really, she really and... I just like get zoned into her. I you feel that vulnerability, feeling the vulnerability, not feeling the chemistry between her and James. Oh no, no. not at all. I think you're not oh, supposed no. to you're not though exactly. either. It's... But it was funny though because she had it with him last season. It was also different, different actor, guy. but mm-hmm. I think because I mean. As we've been saying, they're going to set him up with Lala. Right, right. And it was also the situation with last season, too. It was like what they were going through and why they kind of had that connection there. But now you see him back in their everyday life and you see that there's it not. It just doesn't it's work. Just, no. It, it, but it's now but not working so long that mm-hmm. you're like, okay. Like, yeah, just end just it already. End it. It's exactly. an unhealthy relationship where you know it should have ended a long time ago and you're still sticking around because it's comfortable. And you're just like, please, <laughs> just go. Do everyone a favor. Move on. Yeah. Like the the I was like I feel more I felt not only chemistry between Lala and James in yeah. that scene I felt but more I chemistry also, with him and with and Je- Lala and, and Jessica, Jessica. I, did too. Yeah. I was like there was more of a connection there too I was That's like ooh. Lala's just fabulous know, he just, just walks everyone in. just loves him it's just that buzz when he came in there I'm like ooh it's like hot. <laughs> I was joking around in there. I'm like, I just love that he can just go up to anybody and just be like, hooker. And then, like, it doesn't, I can't right. even say that so because like, I'm not as fabulous uh, as and, him. And he's amazing. He is. Yeah, but exactly. He's just like a chemistry, like, bub aura. Mm-hmm. Like, he just oozes it with everybody's everyone. Everybody's kind of drawn mm-hmm. into it. Yeah, he could, um, can you imagine him as a vampire? He doesn't even need to glamour people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he's so, like a, a different version of Eric for Ginger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But for everyone we'll get else. to that because I love. Oh my god, Ginger was just amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. I know I'm. I'm jumping around like crazy today. But yeah, so he he had a great talk with Jessica. Gets her to feed, and it was great that he came in for James. Mm-hmm. I think he. I think that was a little self. I don't know. I think he was doing that partially. Like, okay, I like this James guy. I'm gonna help him out because I want to get with that. I don't know. I thought it was a little playing for different um strategic yeah it was very strategic or, but not because like, he's nice he's gonna do like, something like that doing but... stuff for people you care about mm-hmm. and it was much more for james than for jessica yes i i get that because he knows jessica but, but it seems but, like but jessica couldn't feed on Suki because that would be too what was funny because i know i had asked that um earlier it was like well why does She's been around Suki all of this time and hasn't lost control on her. But mm-hmm. Adeline, we were saying maybe because she's a you know a, a younger Faye and if she's more Faye or how that works. Um, but apparently Jessica's now we learn maybe just because she's nervous too because Suki smells better. But she does smell Suki at least. Mm-hmm. All right, <laughs> I'll take it. But that's a if Jessica's not going to obviously Bill will. Yep, and not on her wrist. Because that's too impersonal. Mm-hmm. That's right. 
I mean, I guess right. I guess they've done everything though together right, to, right, too. Right. It's still, like, <laughs> if you want friendship, here's my arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, it's just lunch. Oh wait, here's I'm, my neck. I'm right? single like, now. Well, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. The like neck. the Wrist last with time, Elsie. Yeah. It's getting closer to other mm. stuff, to other <laughs> places. <Areas. laughs> That, that are apparently more tasty. <laughs> of course. Why not? So we see her come back, yeah, and she lets Bill feed from mm-hmm. her again. Mm-hmm. So he's up to, he's, he's got his strength. They're of, ready. Yep. Yes. They're ready for the battle. They are ready. And they the bring battle in, of Normandy. <laughs> <laughs> they bring in the other vampires as well. <laughs> Good job, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they actually called it out, though. Called out I the history? When, yeah, when, when he said that, I was like, I think I'll let that go. And then when Bill actually said something, I was like, oh, thank God they at least called him out on that. Because it's a, a little bit. Thing. <laughs> it's okay. Well, Jason and Eric and everyone joining forces, it was going to be a good time. Yeah. And we got introduced to Keith, who's mm-hmm. played by yes. Riley Smith, who we will have in studio next week. There we go. So, and we kind of see a little bit later on what, you know, how he's introduced into mm-hmm. the circle. Let's I think get... we got a glimmer of it already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's get into kind of, I, honestly, this is my favorite part of the show because I was just laughing hysterically. Eric and Pam oh, and yeah. Ginger circa 1986 to 2006. Mm-hmm. You know, funny going they... through oh, yeah. the... Yeah, the, uh, eras uh, the, with her hair, and then the video store with the laser discs, and the, I mean, just everything about Did it was you guys so have much a fun. Favorite outfit, favorite time, when, favorite flashback when Ginger scene. Ginger saw him walk in. Oh First of God, all, yes. I thought, okay, he's. I thought he was gonna be naked because of how taken aback she, she was. I, I did too, with him. his fangs and everything, because she had just said, "Oh, well, vampires aren't real," so I thought he was gonna come in all like naked the with the Fabio yeah, hair, with, like, the and... long hair, and the fangs, because it was like she went so Instead, crazy. Instead, he came in with I was calling it the Chandler Bing outfit. <laughs> it looked exactly <laughs> like early Matthew Perry Friends era. So funny. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Yeah, it was so fun. I would work at that video oh. store. My grandpa had a video store. I wish he had a guy like that there and when and I was Eric younger. Would just yeah, come exactly. out of the bathroom. Right. Oh, I'm trying to think. Did you have a favorite? Well, I, I, I just, well, obviously, I love Pam's like '80s hair too. I just mm-hmm. thought that was the best. But um, I, that's kind of like what, what for me is like the favorite part of the whole show. To me, is when they have these fun, campy moments and and. To me, that's like quintessential True Blood. So I love that. I love that it was fun and it wasn't taking itself seriously. And and again, I think it was very important because it really, even though it was fun and everything, it really helped get, fill in those blanks for us now of like how that all began and why, you know, Eric was there and why they ended up having Fantasia and everything. And I thought that was that was a really cool way of doing it in a really fun way. So I completely agree. Informative and right, funny. Informative and fun <laughs> wow. at the same time. Good writing. <laughs> And yeah. again, they keep bringing back old characters, and, and the only way they can yeah. do it in the final season is in flashbacks. So they had the Magister, who we yep. met his demise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was um, like, oh yeah, I don't miss you. Mm-hmm. I did miss Ginger though. I like really I did. bring her back. I was like, oh, I really liked you. Yeah, and I I we mentioned it before, but I loved that they made her like a smart little kind yes. of like vampire filmy like so, yeah. he's just like such a nerd that such knew nerd. everything yeah. I loved it but also, I mean it was like her idea yeah and also how much she changed too like from the way she was when she first came in as sort of that smart nerdy kind of meek you know so then where she was when she was coming with the Fantasia idea it was like oh she was like dressed so differently and she just had this whole different kind of vibe vibe about her well yeah. she's worked with them now we realize i mean it was 96 when she came in and this mm-hmm. where they're supposed to be in 2011 that's you know that's a lot, yeah, of, a long that's time. A lot of time i'm not gonna do math that quickly but well, it's like 15 around, years 10 to 15 yeah. years i mean because we see that 2006 point time and everything so yeah. yeah a good 10 15 years that they've been the only thing i wish we had seen is when she found out they were actually vampires that's true because they didn't really yeah do that and that's what i thought they were going to do when mm-hmm. when he was going to come out i thought okay they're going to show right away with the fangs yeah. and then she's going to know right away that they do but then all of a sudden real. she she does know and yeah, yeah that's and when the, they and the 10 years later obviously like it wasn't a necessary scene they didn't no. need to have it for us to get anything i just was you know her reaction was going to be so over mm-hmm. the top <laughs> that you i was like oh, ginger's reaction to finding <laughs> out there were actual vampires and that eric was one would have been would she have probably been. honestly just like fainted or collapsed right. and you can't film too much <laughs> out of that i like that we saw the throne as soon as that yes. came out i'm like eric's throne. yes the throne eric's chair <laughs> it's back no it was, i i would love that and i you know and it was actually a good time 
piece for them on their private jet <laughs> to yeah. be chatting about this. And then Eric's reaction to it. I know, that was like, great. You little Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> that was so he, funny. But he, but was, he loved it. Yeah, he yeah, loved he it. Yeah. That's the thing I was also going to bring up. Flashbacks and the fight scene, mm -hmm. I felt like there was a lot of Eric Pam love mm -hmm. mentioning, which we've always understood that they have this profound, deep connection. They right. have time together, like... Eric is what Pam cares about. But to me, it's always been kind of a respectful maker yeah, love. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like they're like, like today they even mentioned, they were like, oh, we were together yeah, the on, on and off. off. That's why I think I was confused. I asked you guys that like off camera before we went mm. on. I'm like, oh, I didn't really realize that because I thought it was more the maker, makey no, kind no. of they love. They definitely had some sexual like, relations. You know what, though? I mean, felt weird to well, me we saw him like having sex with his sister and stuff. I mean, it's very like incestuous. Well, that's what it feels like. It feels like a family member type thing. That's why I thought it weird. And I just like, Pam, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want them together I, that way at the no, end. I, don't I want either. them together but like, I feel like it's soulmates. pointing that way. Now that's I'm wondering why they're doing that too. That's why it's like because oh. it's it's being made a point of. It well, because we've it seen is out there, we've yeah, seen them get it on when they well when she was kind of first made. Yeah, you know, but it was. But that was more like I felt like the, her kind of being transformed. Yes, yeah. more than like oh they're having a sexual like relationship in that way. That's why it felt weird. I was like oh I don't know if well, I like them going that route. And I Pam's always been with the ladies. Right, I just feel like that, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, I'm, me too. I, I can't picture her with eric yeah for a lot of reasons it's just, that's what but you're right they are setting it up to make you feel that way exactly and i don't know how i, how I feel about that <laughs> we will have to see mm -hmm. i think maybe there's because of the dynamic too because i think the love with them is the same that eric had with godrick you know the, the, he you know would do anything for him i did i'm starting not to uh, though i'm too <laughs> i i agree with you because it's starting to feel like they're trying to set you up that they exactly have this thing, they're whole... building it they're they're building the love connection. And intimacy in a different level. Yeah. Yeah. So we see, see all of them. And then they arrive back at Bill's. Bill's got like a big reunion party going <laughs> on at his place. Um, I Okay. I don't know if I want Eric with Sicky, but I love them together only because it brings out a side of him that I'm in love with. <laughs> Every time okay. like I see him with Sookie, I'm like, I want to be Sookie right now. <laughs> they had a lot of... Like in there their short, tension. yes, yeah. lots of sexual tension. There was. Yes. I even wrote that there was like mm -hmm. moment. I was like the Suki Eric moment. He was curling her hair. Yeah. Did you feel uh, bigger moment there or bigger moment w between her and Bill earlier? I thought Who it gets was, the vote. That, that's the thing. Is that like, Eric. I think the Eric moment was more intimate. I than, felt like than anything with the Bill moment. Completely. Yeah, it was definitely more. Which intimate. is weird yeah. in a way, but it was like mm -hmm. I, I understand she's like. They are married in real life, you know. Mm -hmm. I expected there to be more, a lot more sexual tension. And I was mm -hmm. like, why am I feeling so much with Eric right now? You know what? I think I felt more tension with Suki and Bill last week when they were hanging out by the Definitely. trees and stuff. Absolutely. But they had this, this, this week, I mean, in terms of that, you know. I don't know. Yeah, it was definitely, I feel like Suki, whenever she has moments that don't involve her being eaten, mm -hmm. like those are those those key ones where there's more intimacy than when that's happening well, I, you think they're like setting us up to try to kind of throw us off the trail a little bit here because they're having all these moments with everybody and how they're going to end up yeah kind of divvying it all up at the end you know it's like because it to me seems even more confusing because you could feel like okay it's gonna go she's gonna go back with bill and everything but then she had that little moment again with eric and then mm -hmm. you're thinking okay well what about sam and she definitely out of the pit you know it's like just so much stuff that's going on that i don't know what to think anymore on what just, they're trying to yeah. send us in what direction. And uh, we see Willa's feeding on somebody when he calls, mm -hmm. you know, calls her over and she's like, ah, oh, son of a, you know, and <laughs> throws money at the Not guy. Very obviously. happy. No. Well, I mean, yeah. I like that she yelled at him. I know um, she was saying in interviews, the actress who plays her, um, that Willa's kind of coming into her own yeah. a little bit. And it's kind of nice to see the feistiness yeah. run through that family. I mean, there's Eric surrounded by feisty women. Mm -hmm everywhere that's true and i did like seeing that too i like seeing her have that kind of confidence and that feistiness like you know she's so, definitely kind of come into her own now as a vampire mm -hmm. here so we have to kind of start wrapping up let's get into this raid because I it was ridiculous oh, one thing about okay. will first is Go that ahead. i don't think will has found her niche i'm we're talking Still about how she's for. finding it i do not think she has found it to me she has not hit a sweet spot of where she fits in mm -hmm. and that's maybe because she doesn't fit in yet mm -hmm. and so i'm waiting for that to click because i she might be growing, 
but I don't think Will has really planned. We know who everyone in this show is. Everyone has a very strong mm -hmm. core goal. You know what they want. Their point of view is there. And Willis is a little lost, and she is a little lost. So I'm hoping she finds yeah. herself no, by the end of the season. She is lost. I, I will take it there. Mm -hmm. I just like yeah. the fact that she's kind of gotten out of her shell a little bit now and, and not afraid to kind of stand up and be a little bit more feisty right now because she was feeling hurt. Yeah. So. And the okay. only thing that stopped her from being too feisty was Eric being like, as your maker, we will talk about this later. <laughs> Sorry to have cut no, you off. No, that's okay. Please continue. We only have a couple more minutes. Um, so the raid, and, and as they talked about earlier, they have this underground railroad that goes into the dungeon. So they're able to thankfully get out. They get out Nicole. You know, I loved Arlene's reaction to him as a rat. <laughs> that was, great. It was just amazing. Wait, he's gonna go back and turn into a rat again? Oh, he just did. Like, please don't turn into a rat. Please, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Anything else? And they save Jane. So those are the only two that apparently were still in there, except yeah. for Arlene, who was dragged up top by all that have to be. Of course, at the very last minute. I know we didn't t talk too much about them going to visit Rosie with Kevin, but. We all, we actually all yelled. We're like, "Oh, she's what, Sam? Why did you yeah, say where exactly. it was? She's gonna tell the whole town." Right. So th she brings uh -huh. the whole town, uh -huh. and the Arlene's at the top, and Eric and Suki, you know, come in through the front door a little bit, and and then we get Bill, and the whole rest of the group comes in. But then Rosie's group ruins it mm -hmm. a little bit. I don't know if they actually did ruin it, though. Like, it worked out. I guess it worked out in the end, yeah. It was a good distraction. And we lost Vince. Right. Yeah. We lost so... Vince so easily. So quickly, yeah. So easily. They were setting him up. And they were. Who are they going to go up against? Cause right. I was thinking he was going to be the other, you know, mayor guy here. And all of a sudden, he's gone. He's out of the picture. And pretty much all the happy guys are vampires. Yeah. We didn't... The thing is, a lot of them, but we still have so many questions. Like, I, we saw a lot of the fight. Mm -hmm. We've got Vince gone. We almost lose Arlene. We've got yep. they've got most of it. Pet vampires. They, yeah, the Troy yeah. that was like, "Who are you?" Yep. Yeah. yeah. But we, I mean, we don't know where Kenya is. We don't know where all these people no. are. So I think we have to get a little more. We do. We do. Uh, so I think the next episode is going to be interesting, just to kind of figure out where we're going to go with all of this. And it'll be our half, our almost uh, halfway yeah. point. Yeah. Well, basically, yeah. yeah. And we yeah, had um, point. Terry, Terry appearance. Yeah. That was. It was it was sad to see, and at the same time, I'm I'm not sure how I liked how it went down either. But I was like, oh, it's so great to see Toplo again, and mm -hmm. they're so cute. I one liked him having him back, like he was had that glowing angel vibe. <laughs> I too, the other point that I took away from it was to me it called out what Lala had said, because mm -hmm. Lala earlier talked about how scared he was of death, mm -hmm. and he talked about how much. Like, he was afraid and how Jessica could be a lot more dead than she was. Mm -hmm. And then they brought out Terry. And Terry is dead dead. Yep. And he seems to be quite happy. Yeah. He's glowing. He mm -hmm. looks healthy. He, he looks great. And... The downside is he can't seem to see his family. Yeah, which I thought was, was interesting. I couldn't see them. But they're kind of even filling in the gaps of death. Mm -hmm. Which yep. to me, I was like, you know... Terry leaves, but you're not like, oh, he's going to a bad place. Right. Versus other times, remember when we saw um, people coming up from the graves mm -hmm. a long time ago when we had like the whole witch thing going mm -hmm. on. But death was described yeah. as very scary, very bad. Yeah. And Terry was in a very good he place. He was in a good place. Yes. Well, some of them, though, were even when they did take, um, I'm forgetting her name, who played the witch right now. Um, when they brought her, the, her, the, um, the, oh my God, I'm the old time about, witch that, that came. You mean Marnie? No, she's Are talking you? about who she took, got taken over by Marnie, the Inquisition. Oh. The, um, but Inquisition witch. Inquisition yeah, yeah, came yeah, yeah, yeah. back. Who came back. And had some Spanish name. She actually um, yeah. Sorry, seemed, guys. seemed to get Marnie and tell her it's actually okay if you come with me. So we have seen death pretty good in, in G, you know, Jesus as well. Right. Um, That's true. Didn't seem to be doing too. But then they're gone. But it's Definitely also the gone. actors could be doing right. something. Right. But, right, I, but so. I do think what you're saying was a good point because that's what this episode basically was all about and mm -hmm. they did bring it up a few times and you saw it from the perspective of like lala having his fears and yeah. jessica talking about and you know that it sucks and then but then you saw the whole terry side and you're like okay even though he's gone he's not really 
really death gone. is not the right. end so mm-hmm. i really like the fact that they really played it well with with the episode title mm-hmm. and what and then was we, going on we have arlene with the new love interest yeah right away well first of all she's <laughs> she drank his blood of course so, yeah so there's that connection but it was funny that it was like okay terry okay see you later oh ooh, who's <laughs> this cute guy right over here oh yeah <laughs> hi so let's wrap this up with our predictions so many and now <laughs> You're after Buzz TV. Sarah, you look like you're ready to go. I'm never ready for predictions. No, I'm never. I like think of them like as I'm leaving, like after I'm out of here. I'm like, oh wait. Yeah, I meant to say that. I should have said these <laughs> things, and I'm like, I don't know. Um. So um. Yeah, Arlene's gonna fall in love. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> with, with a vampire. Ooh. But he can't feed off of her. Or he's going to get Hep B. I just think that someone needs to be this cure for Hep B. And I'm thinking maybe it should be Sookie's magic blood. Because no one with Hep B is fed off of her. I don't know. I just am waiting for a cure to come around. And I haven't had any. There hasn't been any, like, potential for it. Like, we haven't seen any glimpse of Mm -hmm. Of this could could be. be. So I'm like, where is this cure hiding? They can't all die. Mm -hmm. No. And there's, I feel like there's obviously going to be a cure. Um, Where is the cure? You know, death is when not is the it end. Coming? That's my prediction. Death is not the end. Do you think the no. cure happens in time to save Eric? <sighs> I okay. Here's I'd, I'd, I'd like to say yes, yeah. but I'd, I'm also at the point too where I don't want everything tied up so neat with everybody all bowed up and then like see you later. I'd like to see the fact that they're killing off people left and right, not letting us have those happy endings. But I don't. I'd like to say yes because I don't want my air going anywhere. But I don't know. I don't know. I was just having I a. I was having an internal freak out this episode over Pam. I was I so know. scared Pam I was going to die. I was. No, she I can't. was. I was. It. It was traumatizing. Know, even the thought of it. Mm-hmm. Like she was going in there and she went instead of Eric. I was literally I panicking. Well, especially when she said, "I'm going to go in first. I was like, "No." I still don't think she's after this episode and the few ones where we found out that he's kind of sacrificed himself. Maybe she's not. Safe. I don't know. I don't know, don't but this next that. episode is going to, I think, answer Anything? a lot of questions, and we may be able to start turning the corner because it's the midway point, and mm-hmm. I think we're going to start getting a lot of answers next Scott, episode. Scott, where can everybody find you at? Uh, you can find me on the Twitter at SMAN80. That's SMAN80, and here for Thursday on Defiance After Shows. And Sarah? Hi, guys. You can find me here for True Blood, and also you can find me on Anatomy of a Movie. <laughs> and you can find me, Kristen Carroll, on Twitter, Kristen Carroll13, and I did a few spotlight ons. Check them out. Amy Gumnick, who was amazing. Uh, Jody Long as well from Sullivan Sun. So check those out and there'll be a few more coming up comic con in two weeks so mm. crazy all right mm. thanks you guys for tuning in to true blood after show we will see you next week with hopefully jc and special guest riley smith from executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire after buzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the after buzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of After Buzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of After Buzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching After Buzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.